Hello boys and girls, Greg from the Scary Spirits Podcast here to make you another cocktail. This week, I'll be making you the Smoky Harvest Apple Cider Margarita, which is the featured drink in today's episode. So we're going to start, take our shaker with ice. To that, we're going to add tequila two ounces one half an ounce orange liqueur cider, four ounces, four ounces, the juice of one half a lime, and maple syrup. One to two teaspoons. There we go. Two teaspoons. Next, we shake a shake a shake. So we take our glass, which we have rimmed with salted cinnamon sugar. In. We add some apple slices as a garnish. I'm going to put one ice cube in there and a cinnamon stick. And there you have the Smoky Harvest apple cider margarita. Pretty good. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the podcast. See ya. This week on the Scary Spirits Podcast, you already know the question we're going to ask you. If ghouls are attacking... Are you Team Ben or Team Harry? Maybe you're like Ben. Food, some weapons, a good watchtower with windows is good enough for you. Or maybe you're Team Harry. Just bunker down in a stronghold with no windows and stay put, no matter what happens outside. Both have their pluses and their minuses. But I would be remiss if I didn't warn you that windows were almost everyone's downfall in this week's movie. Cheers!
welcome to the Scary Spirits Podcast. Please be advised that the presenters may use adult language and or discuss adult situations. This podcast is not intended for younger listeners or those that may be easily offended. So, if you're ready, let's go. Hi, I'm Greg. Hey, I'm Karen. And welcome to the Scary Spirits Podcast, the podcast that combines the two very different yet highly compatible worlds of scary films and alcoholic spirits. What could possibly go wrong? Indeed. How are you, Karen? I'm doing great, Greg. How are you? I'm good, Karen. Thank you for asking. It's what we do. It is, when I remember. (laughs) Anything we need to cover from previous weeks, Karen? I don't think so. Are you ready for Halloween? Getting excited. Only a few days away. I know. I still have a lot to do. (laughs) You always do. All right. I believe this week's film was your choice, was it? Was it not? It was. And what film have you chosen for us this week, Karen? I chose the 1968 Night of the Living Dead. 1968, you say, Karen? Yes, Greg, 1968. Do you remember 1968, Karen? Vividly. (laughs) Don't you? I don't. I don't think. There are probably things that that you tell me, like, so and such and such happened in 68. I would remember. I think Martin Luther King was assassinated in 68. Maybe 67. I'm sure. If I looked up 1968 facts, I would say, oh, yeah, I remember that. I don't think I could remember anything. I would only remember it if somebody told me it happened. Well, I remember things like, you know, the cars we had, the kind of cars we had. And... That's because they had them longer than that. Remember it wasn't going, just in I told you the story about going through the glass window, right? With my yeah. head, with my chitty, chitty, bang, bang helmet. <laughs> that would have been about 68, probably. I don't think I have any memories from then. Yeah. I didn't leave the vivid life you did, Greg. Yes, I'm sure you have all kinds of stories. Because how you know, I was a, I had no siblings to, you know, torture, build, build stories around. <laughs> all right, any reason you chose this film, Karen, from 1968, Night of the Living Dead? Um, really, I just hadn't seen it, and it seems like a really cool Halloween movie. Just a creepy Halloween fest. It was released in October. And that too. Um, early October. Actually, October, October 1st. 1st. Yeah. Yeah. I knew that totally. 1968. So, yes. Also, it was released in October. Do we have a themed cocktail for this movie? <laughs> we don't. I just picked we a don't. Co- well, we have a cocktail, but oh, it's not themed. Okay. It's. It looked like a tasty autumn drink to me. And I thought, I want to make this one. So, it really doesn't have anything to do with the movie. Although he does at one point ask if there's a fruit seller, so I can tie it in that way. Well, don't keep us in suspense, Karen. What what drink have you chosen? The Smoky Harvest Apple Cider Margarita. It's a cozy take on the classic and the perfect warming fall cocktail to sip on with friends or family. See, yep. so it's perfect for us. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, it is. How would we make this cocktail, Karen? It only takes like five minutes. So <laughs> that's what they say. <laughs> Be real quick. Just tell us how to do make it. Well, if you happen to have all the ingredients on hand and ready to go, yes, five minutes. Some of us are not organized, Greg. We won't mention any names, but it's me. Cinnamon, sugar, and flaky sea salt for the rim. These are your ingredients. Two ounces of tequila, half ounce of orange liqueur, four ounces of apple cider, juice from half a lime. One to two teaspoons of maple syrup and apple slices and cinnamon sticks for garnish. So first you're going to rim your glass with lime juice from the lime and then put it in the salted cinnamon sugar, which is very tasty. I like that. Combine the 
tequila, orange liqueur, apple cider, lime juice, and maple in a cocktail shaker. Add ice and shake it to combine. This is the first time my top ever flew off on the shaker. It just <laughs> all just it all just came apart. <laughs> Strain into the glass and garnish with the apple slices and cinnamon sticks. If desired, you can light the cinnamon stick on fire for a smoky effect. Did you do that? No, but I want to. <laughs> <laughs> of course you do. If you listen to last week's podcast, you'll know that Greg really likes fire. Do I? You mentioned it. Oh. It's very good. I like it a lot. Okay. Should we give our listener time to make the drink? Absolutely. Hold on. And we're back. Yes, we are. Hi, Karen. Might you have a brief synopsis of this film? Because I, I do not. I do. You want to hear a story? Tell me a story, Karen, all about Night of the Living Dead. The 1968 version. Yes. A desperate group of individuals takes refuge in an abandoned house when corpses begin to leave the graveyard in search of fresh human bodies to devour. The pragmatic Ben does his best to control the situation, but when the reanimated bodies surround the house, the other survivors begin to panic. As any semblance of order within the group begins to dissipate, the zombies start to find ways inside, and one by one, the living humans become the prey of the deceased ones. It's a pretty good one, Karen. Yeah, I As agree. I was watching this, I kept thinking back to the surviving the zombie apocalypse episode we did on Wicked Ramblings, Karen. <laughs> kept thinking, this is exactly what I was talking about right here. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen this film before, Karen? I had not. Yeah, I have seen it before. Still, I, I think I've only seen it once. So it was, still, it was a good refresher to watch it again. Where did you watch it, Karen? It was free on Amazon Prime. It was free on Amazon yes. Prime. There are several versions on Amazon Prime, though. There is a rent and rental one, though, too. That is like a, it's like a remastering um, or something. It's like in HD and all of that stuff. And oh, did I you almost watch did that. that. That's the I, that was the one I had saved to watch, but then I was like looking around and it said more ways and it's like oh it's free so i used the free one are you ready to get into it karen Ooh, spooky halloween movie yes let's go all right night of the living dead let's just spoil this one for everyone 1968 well i'm sure most people have seen it it's a classic so the first thing that popped up on my screen karen was frightening scenes alcohol use smoking foul language and violence yep I don't remember alcohol use. Yeah, I don't either now that you say that. Unless they're talking about the alcohol they were using to make their Molotov cocktails. Maybe. <laughs> so rated 13 plus. And we see a car driving down the road, Karen. We kind of get our first montage. And it's a long, windy road car. Yes, it is. And then the title comes up. And the car drove, see the car drive away. And it's driving up a hill that says Cemetery Entrance. A sign that's been shot a bunch of times. Yes, <laughs> full of shotgun holes. That's a country sign. Then we're in the cemetery. They do show an American flag, so you're assuming we're in America, too. And did they say something about it being the first day of summer? Well, they're talking. It's a man and a woman in the car, and Weird. she's talking about the time change, and she says they should do it in the summer because it's 8 o'clock at night, she says, and it's still light out. Yeah. So we know it's probably in the spring, right? When they do the time change. Uh, I don't know. And it's eight o'clock at night. I say it's late spring, early summer. She's just talking about the time yeah. change. I just found it interesting. And she's wearing a jacket, so it doesn't really look like she's dressed for summer. I guess the trees are all full of there every time we see them, though, aren't they? All right. So anyway. Who we learn is Barbara and John in the car, right? Brother, brother and sister. Yeah, she calls him Johnny. And they're there to put a cross. He calls it a wreath, but it's a cross. It's a floral <laughs> arrangement for a grave. 
on their father's grave. And John even says at one point, he doesn't even remember the man's face, doesn't remember what he looks like. He doesn't know why they have to come all the way out there. I guess they got to drive like 200 freaking miles or something to do this. Yeah, it's a three hour ride there yeah. and back. Yeah, the but apparently wants them to do it every year. Yes, the mom wants them to do it every year. And of course, John's smoking a Marlboro. So there's our first smoking. And the radio starts to go a little crazy. Well, it just comes but, on out of the blue. Yeah. And he and then, turns it off. Yeah. And John makes a comment to Barbara that, oh, I guess the wasn't the radio. It must have been a something with a transmission. So I guess they were trying to find a station couldn't. And John complains the whole time he's placed they're putting his cross on the grave. Yes, he does. And then Barbara kneels down in front of the grave and prays. And, and he, John complains some more about her praying. Yes. <laughs> he says, praying is for church. Let's go. Let's go. He just wants to throw the well, what he calls a wreath down in front of the grave and leave. She wants to have a moment with whoever, the father, I guess. And a storm is coming. There's a storm coming. Yeah. And we see someone walking through the cemetery. And then Johnny begins teasing Barbara. This is where you get the classic line. They're coming for you, Barbara. Yes, they're being siblings right now. He's being a He's dick to her. his younger sibling. Yes. Because he knows she's scared in the cemetery. So, of course, he's going to make fun of her. So, the man attacks Barbara. Johnny runs over to help her and they fight. And Johnny. We should, we should say the man's moving very slowly towards them and then kind of somehow gets to them quickly. <laughs> she goes kind of up to him. I don't know if she's going to say something to him or what. She's, she's going to apologize for her brother's behavior because... He's being weird in the cemetery. Yeah. And then the man starts to attack Barbara. Johnny runs to help her and they fight. Johnny hits his head on the tombstone. And he go. Johnny and the zombie fight, not Johnny and Barbara, though. Yes. And then the zombie goes after Barbara. Barbara runs away. And as she does, she trips and loses her shoes, Karen. Did you notice what kind of shoes? Were they nice shoes, Karen? Nah, I didn't really notice them. Were the kind of shoes you would wear in a cemetery walking on the dirt and ground? No, but it looks like the pair of shoes you'd wear to church. Okay. She gets to the car. The zombie guy is moving very slowly, and she looks like she's booking pretty fast. I don't know how he keeps catching up to her, but she does get in the car. But the keys aren't in it. Well, Johnny has the keys. Speaking of the car, Karen. Oh, crap. <laughs> Any idea what kind of car that is? I know it's a Pontiac because it said it that. It is. It is a Pontiac. Yeah, you saw that on the interior when he was changing the radio. Yeah. It's very observant of you, Karen. Thank you. All right. So you know it's a Pontiac. You want to try for the year now? Well, the movie was it. It's a 68 movie. So they probably filmed it in 67. Do you think it was new? I'm going with 67. That's very good, Karen. Very observant. Very. Very good guess. Very, you know, way to use your. Powers of intuition. <laughs> <laughs> so it was 67? It was 67 Pontiac. Okay. Now, what 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 model is it, Karen? <laughs> I have no idea. It's a Le Mans, but it's a Tempest Le Mans because it's a two-door. Mm, sporty. Yeah. yeah, other Le Manses were four doors. Any idea what that car sold for brand new in 1967, Karen? $3,800. <laughs> Not bad. You're a little high. Well, mine's fancy. You're a thousand dollars high, actually. Oh. Two thousand seven hundred and forty three. Damn it. All right, Karen. What does that car go for now? I assume you want to go with it in great condition. It kind of looks like a muscle car. Is it a muscle car kind of? Or is it something that people would want now? You know what Pon I mean? Pontiacs like are pretty yeah, they were they were known as like the, you know, the sporty division of I'm gonna say 13,000. I'm going to give you that because it's you're pretty close to the, the low retail. So I'm going to give it oh, to you. <laughs> but I like the fancy ones. I know. $12,700. Okay. I'm going to fix it up myself then. Okay. <laughs> Average is 26,000. And a oh, high end one, like uh, immaculate, like mint. $49,000. Uh, okay. I should have. No, you don't need to give me that. That's too, I was too low. Here's where I made a note. It's a pretty quick moving zombie. 
Well, it seems to be moving slowly, but every time I mean, not, you show it, it's closer to her. I'm not talking about it's walking necessarily. Oh, he I does, he does he was... walk pretty quick through the trees and things. We see that. Oh. But his actions when he's beating on the car and trying to get in are very quick and deliberate. You know what I mean? True. I will agree with that. And that's a smart zombie because he picks up a brick, Karen, and he smashes the window. She does lock the doors and when she's in the car. And she just releases the emergency brake. And the car rolls down the hill and the zombie tries to chase after it. But she eventually wrecks it and pins herself against a tree. So she has to go out the passenger side and she runs away. The whole time the zombie's following her. Right. And we should say they're not called zombies. No, they're not really called anything. Well, later in the ghouls? news reports, they call them ghouls. Yeah. Yeah. But we know them as zombies now. But yes, ghouls. So she reaches the road, the main road, and runs. She sees a farmhouse in the distance and she tries to get to it. Yeah. She bangs on the door, goes around the back. He's still following her. She's doing anything she can to get into the house. Doesn't eventually, seem like anybody's home. No. Eventually she gets in through a back door or something. She grabs a knife from the kitchen. And then she starts walking around the house. And it looks like there might have been a struggle in the house. Things are askew, Karen. <laughs> yes, they are. And then we have she, a taxidermy scare. She does try the phone, too. Yes. But the phone, for whatever reason, makes a weird noise. It doesn't work. Phone is dead. Then more zombies arrive. And it's a, it's dark outside now. And Barbara sees goes, goes upstairs and sees a corpse at the top of the stairs of the house, Karen. Yes. She screams. It looks like its head's half eaten off. She runs out of the house and is blinded by headlights. Then a large black man grabs her and shoves her in the house, Karen. Yeah, he's got a tire iron. Yeah, and he locks the door. And this is Ben. We learn his band. And he is out of gas, Karen. That's why he stopped there, because he saw they had a gas pump. But it's locked. Yes, they need to find a key. I guess it's padlocked. And she just stares at him. Yes. She's in shock or traumatized or something. And this whole time, up until this point, there's been music in the background, and all of a sudden it just stops. She knows that, and it got real quiet for a while. I, I noticed there were crickets through yeah. the whole thing. Lots of crickets, yeah. So Barbara shows Ben the corpse, and Barbara seems in shock, but she does ask what's happening. And then we see zombies outside smashing the headlights of Ben's car. Because they don't like bright lights? Is that why they're doing don't it? Know. Or... I don't know. But Ben goes out and beats the zombies with his tire iron. Yeah, the two. there were two of them, so he kills them both. So zombies enter the house. Ben comes in and saves Barbara, but in doing so, he drops his tire iron. He struggles with the zombie and eventually pins it to the ground, enabling him to reach his tire iron. He stabs the zombie right through the skull. He so he knows now that he has to. Well, no, well, he doesn't know. I don't think know. he does. He's just no. been lucky. He's just been beating yes. their heads in at this point. Which makes sense. What'd you do? If you've got something to beat something with, you're going to beat them in the head. <laughs> I guess. I guess. More zombies try to enter, but Ben locks the door. He drags the dead zombie outside and lights it on fire, Karen, having a funeral pyre. The, do the zombies don't seem to like fire. Yeah, it's like, that would smell terrible. Ugh. So Ben turns on the light in the kitchen and starts looking for weapons, and he tells Barbara to turn on more lights in the house, which I was like, what are you doing? That's not what you want to do, but whatever, go ahead on. But she's worthless. She just yeah, stands there. She is. I think she's in shock, right? I guess. She stays in shock for almost the entire movie. The entire movie, yeah. Ben asks Barbara to help him find some wood to board up the windows. Right here I made a note as Ben is boarding up the, I guess it's the kitchen door, that the calendar on the wall says December 1966. Hmm. So I, I just that noticed means. that he just happened to find some wood sitting in the kitchen, some boards. Maybe it takes place in 66. I don't know. But it's December, and she's talking about it being summer. Well, it's not winter. No. I just found it odd that they hadn't changed their calendar since December of 66. If we're led to believe this is the summer of 67 or whatever. Yeah, I don't know. Or 68 even, maybe. So Ben nails 
a door over the kitchen door. Yeah, he's so taking off doors up. that are inside the house. Interior doors. Yeah, and and blocking the reinforcing entrances. the exterior doors. Yes. And Barbara comes back with some kindling to help. Yeah, like she, that's what I said. <laughs> she found kindling. That's not going to do anything, but okay. <laughs> then Ben tells Barbara his story, how he got the truck at the gas station. He got in it because there was a radio and he watched a gas truck wreck and caught on fire and uh, zombies were chasing it. But once it was on fire, they all backed away. And he plowed right through he them. He plowed said. through a whole <laughs> bunch of them in, in the truck. He's in. Mm -hmm. Then Barbara tells her story about she and Johnny at the cemetery and talks about how she was attacked by the zombie. And Ben tells Barbara, she should just calm down. You should just calm down. Yeah. (laughs) Simmer down. Simmer down. But she keeps talking in her in shock kind of way. Simmer down. She wants to go back and get him, Johnny, because she thinks he's still alive. She does. Ben and tells she's him, begging him, please, we have gone. to go get We he have gone. to go get him. Yeah, but she won't stop begging him. She man. hits Ben. And Ben don't like that. He no, hits he her doesn't. right back. <laughs> yep. Hard she enough out. that she's knocked unconscious. And so he, he does put her on the couch and, you know, takes care of her. And here's why I made a note. The lamp on the end table right there by that couch. My wife has one identical that in her office. I believe it was her grand or her mother or her, yeah, her grandmother's. <laughs> Interesting. So Ben finds the big console, I don't know, radio, whatever they call them. He's listening to the news report. Yeah, the, the radio station says we're going to stay online day and night during the crisis. And here's where we get the famous line. There is an epidemic of mass murder being committed by a virtual army of unidentified assassins. We heard that before, Karen. No. In a white zombie <laughs> song or anything. Mm. That's where I know no. it from. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's in a song called Knuckle Duster Radio 1A. Oh, yeah. Which is really, I I have it on my playlist as a intro to Thunder Kiss 65. Because it goes right from that into Thunder Kiss 65, you know? Yeah. Okay. I believe you. <laughs> and the news per- person also says that eyewitnesses say they appear to be ordinary people, though some seem to be in a trance. A sudden general explosion of homicide. <laughs> and there are more zombies outside by now. Ben starts a fire in the fireplace, and he uses a lot of lighter fluid. I was surprised it didn't go up a lot Yeah. bigger than that. <laughs> Me too. And then he makes a torch from a table leg and some curtains. And then he takes a uh, like an upholster chair and drenches it with lighter fluid and takes it outside and lights it on fire and kind of rolls it off the front porch towards the zombies. And they all retreat. Yes. Fire bad. Fire bad. <laughs> yes. So then Ben starts looking around the house and he finds a rifle and some ammunition, Karen. And he finds some shoes for Barbara even. He, even he does. He gives Barbara some shoes. They're flats, though. They're not like the nice heels she was wearing earlier, are they? No, but she's going to need flats if she's going to have to make a run for it. (laughs) And he tries to assure her that, you know, the place is boarded up pretty well and they have food and a gun and bullets and someone will eventually come to get them. She's still in a trance. She didn't say anything. She's pretty catatonic. Ben tries to talk to Barbara. She's in shock. He says he's going upstairs and he will be able to hear if anything happens down there. So she will be okay. Yeah, he does reassure her a lot, tells her she's safe. He's boarded up. You know, he's told her everything he's doing. He says, you're okay. It's going to be okay. Or you're safe now. He'll protect her. So Ben goes upstairs and wraps the corpse up in a rug and drags it into another room. And all the whole time, all this is happening. We hear like in the news, the radio is going on in the background the whole time. And here's where we learn that the killers are eating the flesh of their victims. They make a note of that. Yes. And then two men from town enter and startle Barbara. And apparently they were hiding in the cellar. I forgot this part. I forgot there were people hiding in the cellar. I thought they came from out, outside. Well, I thought they broke in. And I said, how yeah. did they get in? Because he yeah, boarded everything up and they just come walking in. I thought, wait a minute. It's not as secure as he thinks. <laughs> All right. But Ben comes down and he argues with the, the men. One of whom is Harry and the other is Tom. And we also hear that 
Harry's wife and kid are downstairs and the kid ain't doing so good. <laughs> She's hurt. That's what Tom says. When Ben's mad, they didn't come up and help them. Yes. Yeah. He needed their help. That's right. And he's like, I'm not going to take any type of chance when they're safe in the basement. Why should I risk my life for someone else? Yes. That's what Harry says. I called him Mr. Cooper. And Harry thinks the cellar is the safest place, and he tries to convince them all to go down there. But they argue about it. Yes. So Ben says the house is the safest place because everything's boarded up and they can see out from the windows And they have an exit. There's a way to get out. Which I like that. Yes. If you need to get out. You're in the cellar, you're screwed. You're locked in the cellar. Apparently, there's one way in and one way out. It's the same. So let's stop and think. Are you team Ben or are you team Cooper, Mr. Cooper? I'm team Ben. Yeah, me too. I couldn't take just being and down everyone there. is, even Tom and even Helen later when she finds well, out. Helen just hates him. I think they're a married couple who are past liking each other, but she's disappointed in him constantly, apparently. But yeah, so they argue a lot about that through the movie. So then they um zombies bust through the glass and grab Ben and Tom through the boarded up windows. Ben shoots one a couple times in the chest, but I don't help. But only, but then he, once he shoots it in the head, it drops. It gone. See, we think by now he knows, right? You think this would be the aha moment? Is this moment. where, yeah, Barbara's cutting off their hands with the knife too? Uh, Tom is. Oh, Tom is. Okay. Tom grabs some of the kindling. And is whacking at their hands and their hands are like falling Falling apart. apart. Okay. (laughs) And Barbara might. I don't know. No, I think you're right. Then we see more zombies outside, Karen. And we have some rear nudity, Karen. (laughs) I was going to say, you're going to do a butt cheek count? Yep. And then we also see see two bare breasts in the dark, but they're hard to see. Oh, I didn't see them. (laughs) It's the same girl, I think. So, yeah, there's just a naked lady who's a zombie. But it's really dark, so you can't really see anything but they are there Karen. but there's a lot more of them out there now there's like maybe 20 you think maybe so in then, varying degrees of decomposition i wrote and dress yes <laughs> so ben tells harry to go to the cellar and shut the hell up <laughs> he's tired of listening to ben or harry right he says you can go down there and be the boss i'm the boss up here there's a power struggle yes, yes. And Ben won't let Harry take any of the food or supplies because he says, I'm protecting this. the upper floors. Upper floors are mine. Go to the cellar and shut up. Right? Yeah. Everybody's putting a line in the sand. This is my stuff. You can't have it. Right. He's saying, I'm not going to let you in the basement if it all goes to shit. That's right. And Ben says, fine, but you can't have any of our food or anything from right. up here. No radio, no TV, no nothing. Yeah. So then Tom brings Judy up from the cellar, who, I don't know, I, this is the first time we hear about Judy. Yeah, I was surprised to Tom's see her. Tom's girlfriend, Judy, down there in the cellar. And Cooper's retreat to the cellar, and Harry locks the door, and he smokes a Marlboro. Yeah, down in the basement. And then maybe Ben smokes a Marlboro. Yeah, whichever. Because next I have Harry down in the basement, smokes one of his wife's Marlboro, because he's out. So you see him crumple up his pack and throw it down. And he goes through his wife's purse, grabs one of her Marlboros and lights it. Yeah. And she asks where Tom and Judy are. Yeah, And and they are nursing their daughter. Yeah. And what's his name? Harry. Harry. I called him Cooper. So Harry says they're just going to stay up there. Tom and Judy are. And he says there's two other people. And he gives a lot of excuses as to why he didn't go up there when he knew there were two other people who might need help. Mm -hmm. And she just sarcastically agrees with him. Yeah, she's a little snarky with him. Yeah. Helen. The kid looks about nine or ten, you think? Probably. They argue, Harry and Helen. And Harry throws his marble on the floor, just wasting it. (laughs) So now they're... I don't know, one less marble down. He was out. He grabbed that one from his wife's purse. I know. It's not an unlimited waste, supply wasting. at this point. It's wasting. So next, they talk about they find a TV upstairs or something. Harry does let it slip that there's a radio upstairs, yeah, and so the wife gets pissed because she wants unhappy. to go up there. Yeah, because To she hear wants updates, to know. to know. They'll probably be telling us what to do and whatever. 
giving us updates. So then we hear there's a TV upstairs, um, and then Judy agrees to go downstairs to the cellar so that Harry and Helen can come up, and Judy is going to watch after the girl while they come up and like listen to the news reports or whatever. Yeah, and I thought the girlfriend was going to bite it down there because I thought, I mean, the, the girl kid, was going to, yeah. Because we don't, all of a sudden, she's just gone for an extended period of time, and I just thought, well, she's dead down there, but because the kid probably got bit and so tom goes upstairs to help ben with the tv barbara is still in shock <laughs> ellen lights a marlboro and then harry complains and lights a marlboro as well lots of smoking but barbara is just laying on the couch staring at the lace of a yeah. doily on the end of it yeah, she's she complete is. i was frustrated with her i guess she's supposed to be in shock but then at they some say, point her brother was killed yes <laughs> Helen does ask Harry, why don't he help her do something? <laughs> do something, help somebody. Uh, and he's bitching. just complaining. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, he they're they're gonna come in the window. Everything's too weak, you know. But they do mm. get the TV in and it does work. And I think the guy who plays Harry, he played the zombie that Ben killed in the house. Oh, really? I think so. Because he, he came out of the cellar and he came into the house. And I'm like, Wait a minute, that's that zombie. <laughs> but oh, I did whatever. not notice. But they do get the TV turned on and they began watching the news report. Then they're talking about the flesh eating again. The newsman. Yes, is. here we have another famous line. It is it has been established that persons who have recently died have been returning to life and committing acts of murder. So there's a here. lot of dead people in that area. It's in another white zombie song. <laughs> because you'd think it's a country area. Sorry, I missed the. I don't know white zombie, so I missed the <laughs> reference. But it's a country area, right? Well, it was filmed, yeah, outside Pittsburgh, right? Well, but still, I'm saying it's yeah, it's a country area. Yeah, yeah. There's yeah. there's a farmhouse farmhouse by itself without yep. near close neighbors. So these are people who have recently died. They're not buried. They're not coming out of the ground. No, they're not. They're just corpses from funeral homes, funeral homes or if they died at or home or the recently or, deceased. There's a lot of dead people for that small area. There's, you know, what would you say, 40 surrounding the house at some point? Probably, yeah. I mean, I get that there's probably not a lot of houses, so they are going to convene wherever there's a human being. But still, it's like, how did all these people die? <laughs> I don't know. It's a good question. I mean, I could see it happening in a city. Right. Where the population yeah. is very high, you're going to have yeah, a you certain probably percentage. got 20, 20, 20 John Doe's in the morgue all of a sudden rise. Yeah. <laughs> but here, how many dead people could there be? It's true. It's a it's a village or a hamlet. It's not, <laughs> it's not a big city. Doesn't matter. I mean, it was just kind of I thought, where do all these dead people come from? Because you don't see them in later movies. You see them coming up out of the ground. Which would explain a lot. Oh, they're coming from the cemetery. There's a lot of dead people in the cemetery. But the news reports talk about rescue stations that are being set up in every town and they're being protected by armed National Guardsmen. Thank you so much for listening to the podcast. We appreciate you spending time with us. You know, you can help us grow our audience by following us on social media at Scary Spirits Podcast. Just look for us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. And don't forget to tell all your friends to find us too. Now let's get back to the show. Then they talk about radiation from outer space. Of some Venus probe they sent up and NASA had to shoot it down or something because it had... Some strange radiation and attached radiation. to it. And, and then we see men in Washington oh, arguing. Stop. Let's talk about <laughs> Venus. Because I wondered why they picked Venus, right? Well, I, you... I assume it, that's related to real life events. Did they just recently send a probe to Venus in the 1960s? I didn't look that up. I just looked it up about Venus. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so do you remember the order of the planets from your youth? Hell no, Karen. <laughs> So starting from the sun, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and sometimes Pluto. Yeah, I was going to say. 
We learned Pluto. People don't learn Pluto. So when people ask, because I thought, oh, well, why would they send a probe to Venus? Well, most people would say that Mars or Venus are closest to Earth, right? But they did all these studies and it's actually Mercury that spends most of the time nearest to the Earth. That's just something you can win in a a trivia argument because Mercury is closer to Earth on average than Venus because of the orbits. Did you know that Venus is the hottest planet in our solar system? Did not, Karen. It has volcanoes. Cool. And the one thing that I thought was pretty cool that I did not know is it spins in the opposite direction of Earth and most other planets. Mm. That's your tidbit. Okay. So in 1962, the American probe Mariner 2 flew past Venus for the first time. Cool. And took first measurements of temperature and whatnot. Makes sense. It also discovered the slow retrograde rotation of Venus. You know what you were referring to, Karen? Yes. And then during the following years, those lousy commies sent probes up there. And they crash landed one on it. You know, so it's technically the first landing <laughs> <laughs> on Venus, but it crashed. In 1967, one of theirs transmitted the first data on the lower levels of the atmosphere. Okay, so it's dominant CO2 composition and its density. And then there's so it's very timely until the 70s. Yeah, yeah so that it's a timely reference then. But scientists and government officials are arguing about whether radiation has anything to do with it or not. Surprise, surprise. Scientists yeah. and the military yeah, are just basically great. these guys are walking out of a meeting and they're bombarded by reporters and they each kind of conduct, contradict each other as they're yes, walking they out. Yes, they do. <laughs> Very confidently on both sides. No, I'm right. No, I'm right. That's right. The government official does like warn the scientists not to like talk any more about it until they have time to further discuss. But you until just they have on another talking. meeting. And next we learn that back at the house, Tom and Judy are locals. And he says that Willard is close to them. That's the nearest rescue station. Yeah, they're flashing rescue stations on a loop on the TV at the bottom. While the newsman is giving the report, there's a list of safe stations going on the TV and they recognize one as Willard. Correct. They need to, need to get some gas for Ben's truck. He said it's about 17 there. miles away. So that's not that close. No, but I think you probably make it. Well, the truck can, but it'd be hard to run so, there. So ben tells Helen to go down and take care of her daughter. And then we hear the news reports on saying that anyone who dies must be burned immediately. No time for mourning. Just burn them. <laughs> well, they do say that the doctors are talking about a cadaver they had at the university with all four of its limbs removed and it opened its eyes and started to move its trunk. So that's when they say you have to burn the bodies after death or they'll come back. They'll be reactivated Right. <laughs> in a matter of minutes. Which makes me wonder, and I don't want to spoil it either, Why? what's going on with that corpse upstairs? I don't know. Maybe it's too eaten up? I don't know, because it doesn't It pretty come. bad. I guess, but what it never- much of its head left? I guess it's its head, so yeah, maybe that's it. So Tom finds the key to the gas pump downstairs in the cellar. He says, hey, there's a key that says gas pump on it. <laughs> Isn't that convenient? Yeah, he goes down there and he finds some- um, some canning jars, too. They're going to make some Molotov cocktails to scare the zombies away from the house. So they devise a plan. You know, they're going to, one of them's going to be upstairs throwing the Molotov cocktails. Another one, a couple of them are going to run to the truck and go to the gas pump, fill it with gas, and come back and get the others. And they're going to make a run for it to Willard, right? More or yeah, less. They're all going to get in the truck because they talk about getting there and their main hindrance is the girl who's sick they can't carry her for 17 miles and ben says he'll carry her but they go back and forth in discussion and they realize they can't make it so they're going to try to get to the the truck to the gas pump was that common to have gas pumps on your property on a farm yeah okay that makes sense oh yeah totally on a farm so tom and judy then we see they're in another room and i guess she's making the cutting up curtains to make Molotov cocktails. and They debate on what is best to do. Judy doesn't want Tom to go out. No, why does it have to be him, she says. Why 
And Tom and Judy embrace. They're young and in love. Then they kiss Karen. Right Helen's ready to send Harry out there, no <laughs> problems. But <laughs> Judy has problems sending off her wonderful boyfriend. <laughs> So the next they convince Barbara that she has to go downstairs for a little while and then they can all leave. And she's very happy to do that if that means they can all leave. <laughs> yeah, she's still worthless. Then we see Ben and Tom and they unboard the front door, taking all the boards down. They did come off easy. He did a pretty good job. Yeah. Boarding the struggle. place up. And we see Harry upstairs lighting Molotov cocktails and he tosses them out the window, scaring away the zombies. And some there are quite a few of them out there. Fire. Yeah. yeah. But he actually does go through with his part of the plan. Tom and Ben make a run to the truck. Judy runs out after them. And she does make it to the truck as well. and forces Ben to have to climb in the back. But I'm not sure he went planning to do that anyway. So Ben well, climbs admit, into the back Harry, of the truck. She runs out because she doesn't. She wants to be with Tom. She wants to be with Tom. And Harry just closes the door behind her and locks so, it. Yeah. Yep, it's like you're on your own, sister. I mean, she did want to go, but she did. She also turned back and nope. Yeah. So she had to run to the truck. I didn't think she was going to make it, but she did. So Ben climbs in the back of the truck, the pickup truck, and he kind of wards the jo- zombies off with his torch, which he's made out of the, the table, table leg, leg and, and some soaked. curtains. Yeah. And he like even lights some of them on, on fire in the process. Yes. Harry watches from upstairs. Yeah, they get to the gas pump. Yep, get to the gas pump and Tom can't get the key to work. So Ben just shoots the lock with his rifle. Is that dangerous? Mm, no, no, not really. Not at all. Not a spark or anything? No, no. Okay. No, no, no. Just, Aaron, you know. Let me, during... let me tell you something. You can take a tuna can, you know, like tuna cans, <laughs> fill it mm-hmm. with gasoline. Smoke your Marlboro and extinguish it in the gas and it will not ignite. Really? Yes. So all those movies where they flip the cigarette yes. into the gas? It does fake? not happen, Karen. Oh. Sorry. Don't ask Why? me how I know that, Karen. Okay. But I know that. <laughs> all right. Mom you know, people word. talk. You, you hear, hear things. things. <laughs> yep. So they do get the gas pump working, but inadvertently they spill gas on the truck Everywhere. and catch it on fire. <laughs> It kind of comes out of the pump explosively. Like it, it does. Yeah, like it's pressurized to, or something. Yeah, and like it, they weren't ready. Much like my apple cider did when I was trying to make this drink. And I opened <laughs> the lid and it, it all came flying out. So, of course, Tom says, we got to get the truck away from the gas pump. Otherwise, we're all dead, right? So he tries to drive away from the gas pump, but the truck is still on fire. And Ben's trying to put the fire out at the pump because it made a trail of flames, you know. Mm-hmm. From the gas pump to the car with he's like with blankets or something. Tom then tries to get Judy get out of the truck, and she seems to not want to get out of the truck for some reason. To me, it was weird. Yes, she hesitates, and she's gone. They go. Maybe, maybe it's because <laughs> of all the zombies out there. Maybe, but the truck explodes, and now they're both gone. So Ben uses his torch to keep the zombies away from him as he tries to get back to the house, but Harry won't unlock the fucking door for Ben. Ben kicks the door in because, of course, it's not boarded up anymore. It's just locked. And then Ben starts nailing another door to barricade the front door. And Harry does help him. He does help him. Runs over and helps him. But as soon as they do, Ben just turns and punches Harry a few times. (laughs) They have a stare down and then Ben beats him up. And then he threatens to drag Harry out there and feed him to those things. (laughs) Once again, I kept thinking back to our Wicked Ramblings episode again. (laughs) It's too little, too late. He tried to be like, oh, shit, he's in here now. I'll help him. But yeah, next we cut back to the truck and the zombies go to the truck and eat what is left of Tom and Judy. I thought that was pretty, pretty intense. That scene. It was. It was gross. You know, they are, look like they're pulling when You think about off what they're and, doing. Yeah. And they use like real meat, like and they're fighting over intestines and, and stuff. Yeah. And it's, it's apparently one of the extras was was a butcher and had a uh, <laughs> had a, a business and he like gave them like entrails and parts of pigs mostly like ham and whatever. I was just saying that was But they cooked it. Well <laughs> before they ate so it. So they wouldn't get trichinosis. Um but they did use the chocolate syrup again for the blood. So. It was gross and intense and 
I thought it was very well done. It was scary. Yeah, it's pretty when good. you thought about what they were yes, doing. Yes, when you thought about what they were what was happening. I mean, if you just yes, if you just look at look at it, you know, sure, okay, it's not really that scary, but if you immerse yourself and think, "Oh my god, they're ripping off pieces of cooked flesh and eating because it's falling apart like barbecue, you yeah. know." And you they're see eating them walking it. walking Walking away carrying a hand or an arm. Yeah, or and they're eating, eating and eating meat off and the bone. And there's blood all over their faces. <laughs> and it was, I thought, intense and very well done. I did too. Next, back in the house, Ben asks the others if they know anything about the area because the two locals are gone. Right. He asks if Willard is the closest town. And Helen doesn't know when they talk about going to the Cooper's car, but it's overturned about a mile away. And this is where Ben says he'll carry the girl a mile. Yes, he does that. Say it now, yeah. But of course, Harry says, "There's no way you're going to turn that car over all by yourself." But then Barbara keeps going on and on about the keys. The keys aren't in the car. The keys. Johnny has Johnny the keys. has the keys. And then they say, "Well, do you have a car? Where is it?" It doesn't matter. Johnny has the keys. She's <laughs> just like, just tell me where it is. Then I know cut. she was supposed to be traumatized, but I found her irritating. <laughs> then we cut back to the news report. Apparently, the radiation levels have increased, Karen, and they believe this is causing the dead to rise. And they just have video footage back from the field, Karen. Video footage showing Chief McClellan and his group of armed men scouring the countryside and shooting zombies in the head and burning them in bonfires. (laughs) I called it the local militia. Yeah. He tells people to shoot them in the head or hit them in the head and then burn them. And they've all got their guns and bats and... You know, they're ready to go. Yep. He seems like they figured he's it in out. charge. He's in charge yeah. and he's he's doing pretty well. And they're listening to him and they figured it out. It has to be a blow to the head. Kill the brain. You kill the ghoul. Next, the power goes out in the house, Karen. And then Ben says, is the fuse box downstairs? And say, yeah. And then he runs downstairs. Then Harry tells Helen he wants to get that gun from Ben. Yeah, he wants to be in charge. And then zombies begin beating on the door of the house. Ben comes back upstairs and he drops the gun while trying to keep the zombies away at the window, trying to keep them boarded up. And he even yells to Harry to help him. Come help him. But what does Harry do, Karen? Goes for the gun. He grabs the gun and tells Helen to get in the cellar. Ben and Harry fight. In the struggle, Ben takes back the gun and he shoots Harry right in the gut. I was surprised (laughs) by that. I go, oh. I was too. I didn't remember that part either. Right in front of his wife. Yep. Like, not going to take this bullshit anymore. Just shoots him. Yeah, you're done. Done with you. Good day. I said good day. Good day. <laughs> so Harry falls down to the cellar and he tries to crawl over to his daughter, but then he drops and he gone. Next, we see Helen down there too now, right? Helen's getting choked by zombies through the Oh, door. no. Yeah, she's upstairs. Yeah, she's upstairs. Right. And so I said, why isn't the- anybody helping her? Bar- Barbara well, Barbara uses. does. Barbara Eventually, like, like snaps out of it for. The boards are haphazard. So there yeah. are spaces between the boards. Yes. And, you know, it's not like he boarded it up right next to each other. He worked with what he had. And so their hands can come through the open areas and they've got hold of Helen's dress. I'm like, take the dress off and get away. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> but lots of hands have gripped onto her shoulders. But Barbara does spring up and help her. Yeah, finally. And Helen gets away and goes to the cellar to find Karen, the daughter. Yes. (laughs) Eating her father. Yes. (laughs) Then Karen grabs a metal trowel from the wall and stabs her mother repeatedly. Repeatedly, repeatedly. Like these... So these zombies know how to use tools because they've used bricks. They use bricks to get in the window in the car and in the house. And now she's grabbed a trowel. And she is repeatedly... Stabbing her mother. Yeah. They're chopping for a long time. (laughs) And then they go back upstairs and I'm like, Barbara's going to see her brother. Did you think that? Yeah. Hmm. So Ben and Barbara. He was dead close to there. He was. Right. Ben and Barbara upstairs trying to keep the zombie out. Johnny enters. They do get the door open and Johnny goes right. That's why they made such a point of showing him put on his driver gloves. (laughs) Because that's the only reason I knew it was him. Because he walked in, he put his glove on the door frame there and it was like oh those are the driver gloves that's johnny (laughs) so johnny grabs barbara and he takes her out and 
feeds the others. She go. It's a frenzy. They all just devour her. So zombies enter the house and Karen comes up from the cellar and she tries to bite Ben. Ben He does. He pushes her away. He says throughout the whole thing, he says they're not very strong. He's able to push them away from him. He goes to the cellar and locks the door and barricades himself in. But I'm like, but there's dead people down there. I know. He still got his gun, though. Yeah. So next we see Harry beginning the rise from the dead. Ben shoots him several times with the rifle. Lots of times. Again, just what he doesn't know yet to just shoot him in the head. He eventually gets him. Wasting lots of ammo. <laughs> well, he seemed like he shot him a lot more than he Or he could have like hit him in the head. He didn't even shoot him at all. Then Helen begins to rise. And he kind of expects it because he's watching her. <laughs> all of a sudden her eyes open. So he shoots her. It only takes one shot to put her yeah, down, though. That's what I mean. I think he had a little aggression <laughs> against Harry that he needed to work out. Well, then save a bullet and beat him. Yeah. <laughs> Find something down there to beat him with. So then it seems like it's the next morning. So he's barricaded himself in with multiple boards across the door. And the zombies tried to get in. But it, it almost seemed like they gave up or they hear a sound or something and they just kind of turn away. I don't know what that was. I couldn't tell if they gave up or there was some signal for them to leave. Didn't know either. But next morning we see a helicopter and more townsfolk with guns sweeping the area. They even have a canine unit brought in. Yes. What kind of dogs are they? Those are German shepherds, Karen. (laughs) You want to guess on the um, Corin's ranking of the smartest dogs? What do you think the German Shepherd ranks in the top 10? The top 10 smartest dogs? Where does the German Shepherd fall? I'm going to say it's a three. One being the smartest. Yes, you are correct. It's the second most intelligent herding dog. The Border Collie is the first. And the third most intelligent dog overall. The Poodle is the second. Hmm. So the reason they say they're bred for their high intelligence, high level of focus, and ability to be obedient, which makes training easy. So it says one of this breed's strengths is its ability to evaluate tricky situations and decide on the best course of action. And that's why you'll see German shepherds working in law enforcement. That and probably more so because they take orders. Well, they're easily trainable, yes, because yeah, they they're orders. smart. They, you tell them to attack, and they attack. You tell them to stop, they stop. Their life expectancy is only seven to ten years, which is a little low, which would be a bummer if you had one. But anyway, be. there you go. Yes, so they have German, the canine unit is German Shepherd dogs. And they're shooting every zombie they see right yeah, between the eyes. they're good shots. Yes, they are. All the police officers are wonderful shots. They would graduate the top of their class at the Stormtrooper Academy. Yes. So the men want to go check out the house. Chief McClellan says, there's a house over there beyond those trees we want to check out, boys. Yep. Let's head over there. Do you see his uh, (laughs) cigars in his hat? The cigars? I think so. Three cigars in his hat. And they take care of a few zombies along the way. One shot and they go down. Yep. They get to the house and they see someone moving inside. He says, build a bonfire to burn the bodies. So as they're shooting them, they're gathering them up and they're going to have a bonfire in the field. And one of them says, there's something moving in there, Sheriff or Cat or Chief, whatever. And Chief McClellan says, well, aim aim for the head and for the head, Vince. Shoot him right between the eyes. Ben has come up from the basement having heard the dogs. Yes. And he has his his rifle in hand, too, because he doesn't know what's going on. Right. And he's ready. They might have shot him just because he had an arm. (laughs) <laughs> no they just, just said shoot the, him I right know. between the eyes i know i know i know but i'm just saying even if they didn't think it was a zombie if they saw saw him in there with a rifle pointed at him they might have shot him anyway maybe but but they shoot ben in the head he gone i was like what <laughs> i was not happy about that <laughs> at all remember at the on our um i did but i didn't know Ramb- ramblings horror yes i don't know one with Dr. Craig Fisher. Dr. Craig Fisher. And I said that, well, in Night Living Dead, there was the, the last black guy was the last, but really, not really. You said sort <laughs> of. And I thought, oh, is he going to get eaten or whatever? And I thought, I didn't know. And then that was a bummer. Then we have credits. And while we see credits, we see 
pictures of Ben's body being dragged to the fire. <laughs> yeah, black and white grainy photos. And at the end, the fire is lit. It was a poignant ending, but I was bummed by it. <laughs> it was unexpected, for sure. The end. That is, that is not what I expected to happen. All right, Karen. Anything you really were pleasantly surprised by or enjoyed in this film from 1968? Well, I... Even though I hated the ending, I thought it was excellent because I didn't expect it. So I liked <laughs> that. I thought it was really, really good. I thought um, the acting was good. You know, the conflict right. the conflict was good. <laughs> but it kept you interested. You know, you didn't quite know what was going to happen next if you hadn't seen it before. I realize you did. But you didn't know when each person was going to die, how they were going to die. I thought the ghouls were good. You know, they didn't do a lot of makeup or anything, but when they explained that they had recently died, they didn't need a lot of makeup, mm. you know, because they were all recent deaths. So that was, that was good. I did. I liked the conflict. I was surprised that uh, a black man was a lead at that time. And I, I thought that was cool too, that he was the level headed one, the smart one, the one who, you know, was in charge. And I liked that. Actually, apparently, it wasn't written that way. Oh, they he just impressed them, or something? yeah, he just did, and they just kept the script the way it was. It was just interesting to see the psychology of it all. You know, I'm not going to risk my life to help someone else. Just that all that underlaying beneath the story was given light in light of pandemics and things. It's interesting how people react. So I, I like that about it. Yep. What about you? What did you like? Uh, I agree. I like the ending, even though it I, I does suck, but I liked it. <laughs> I liked it that it was shot in black and white because there was, you know, they were shooting, making color pictures back in 1968. <laughs> but this is shot in like 16. It's like low budget, 16 millimeter black and white. It adds almost, um, I actually read this, but it adds almost a, like a documentary like feel to it or some shit, you know? So you can probably answer this better than I would ever be able to. Is this the first kind of what we would call zombie movie, even though they call it ghouls? We have seen so many and so many movies from, and Craig probably you talked about it a little bit in yeah. the Wicked Ramblings. I know there were others, but this was kind of the one that got the ball rolling, right? Maybe, probably. And also I read that this was loosely based on Richard Matheson's novel, Karen, I Am Legend. Oh. Apparently that novel is the first one that has the eating of the flesh and all that kind of shit. It's interesting that they tried to blame it on radiation. And that, that novel was written in 54. Yeah, I found that interesting too. I didn't remember that watching it. I'm like, wait a I minute. I mean, they have to come up with some reason, right? So I guess. The uh, old standard radiation issue. I didn't really like that. Maybe that's why I didn't remember, because I tried to forget it. <laughs> but they needed a reason. I guess. But that doesn't explain why when you're bit, well, I guess you die. If they kill you, it doesn't have anything to do with the bite. It has to do with you dying. It's not like theoretically transmitting a virus by biting. You just die, and then the radiation levels. Yeah. Yeah. So, But it they made it seem like Karen died from the bite. Well, she might have been injured. Which I guess is possible. You injured. Just infected or whatever. Yeah. But. And we don't know. She could have had internal. All they said was she was injured. So she could have had internal bleeding. They said she was something. bit. They said injured, though. They said and bit. She was bit. Oh, I heard. I thought I have in my <laughs> in the notes, beginning. They said in the beginning, Tom said, yeah, the wife and daughter is down there and she's injured. Oh, but later they say that she was bit. Oh, OK. Because Ben asked what happened. She was bit. One of them bit her. They but said. still, even so, she could have been internally bleeding from yeah who uh, knows? you know if they manhandled her or whatever well they overturned the car with them in it i guess and maybe they were in a corvair cairn with no seat belts i don't know <laughs> <laughs> maybe all right anything you were disappointed in well i said i i, I didn't like barbara's character especially disappointed in i thought she she just bothered me and maybe it's because I've seen other zombie movies now, and I realize you would be in shock, and I'm big talker, Betty Crocker. I don't know what I would do in that situation, but you would like to think that 
you would be able to help, you know, even though, but then again, her brother just died trying to save her. So I, there's a lot of issues there, but her character was, she just stared. I was frustrated by her. I mean, I get it, but I just wanted her to do more. But I, other than that, I think, you know, I, I really did. I liked it. I didn't like the acting in general. I didn't like Barbara. I didn't like Judy acting. Seems like they were carring too hard or something. You know what I mean? A lot of but them. But you didn't believe the bickering between the married couple. Oh, yeah, I believe They it. were good, and Ben yeah, was definitely good. They all and seemed I to be trying th- just a little too hard. I thought the the young guy was okay. It was an equivalent of a, like a high school musical. <laughs> no, it <laughs> was acting. better than that. A college production. <laughs> Not high school. Right. That's putting it on plan nine level. I think it was better than that. Plan nine is junior high, Karen. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. I thought the zombies were good. The movement was good. I Again, yeah. it being one of the first ones, I'm sure so many people have copied it. I wasn't quite sure how to feel about the zombies either. Sometimes they moved fast. Sometimes they didn't. Depends on what they were doing, right? Well, maybe it depends on who you were when you died. Were you an athlete or were you a couch potato? I don't, I don't know. know. And they seem very smart. They seem kind of smart. You're right. And I'm not sure I like that. I couldn't figure out why there were so many of them. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, too many. In the Hamlet. All right. What kind of cocktail rating you want to give this film, Karen? I think it's a three. It's a low or a high three. It's heading towards a four, but I think it's a classic. And I think you should, everyone should see it. So you think it's more of a three and a half than a two and a half? Yeah, two and a half okay. means it's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, yeah. I got no problem with three. I mean, it's a three. It's a solid three. Like I said, there are issues with it, but... I feel like I it's it's con- better than you do, but that's It's fine. a contribution to... It's a classic. Right. Exactly. <laughs> it's a genre almost creating, but... And I was heartbroken really. at the end. <laughs> They really got me. I had no concept that that was going to happen. So I liked that about it. Okay. Three cocktails. What'd you think of our drink, Karen? The I thought it was delicious. M- mine has evaporated once again. <laughs> <laughs> I do have some apple slices I could eat, though. Ooh, that'll be good. Or suck on a cinnamon stick. Mm. <laughs> and then. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Karen, anything we learned today? We learned about Venus. Venus. We learned Venus about... and Venus probes. <laughs> yes. We learned about white zombie songs. <laughs> German shepherd dogs. German shepherds. Pontiac Le Mans. Pontiacs. Is that... Yeah. Le Mans. Is that it? Yeah, I think that's it. All right. I guess next week is my choice, is it? Yes, it's your choice. What have you got for oh, us? Oh, shit. It is my choice. Well, Karen, next week. I have chosen the 2009 film, House of the Devil. (laughs) Okay. And why did you choose that? Glad you asked, Karen. House of the Devil was released October 30th, 2009. And our next episode comes out November 2nd. Can you believe it's November already? It's crazy. So just a few days after the anniversary of the release of House of the Devil, way, way back in 2009, Karen. Okay. Have you seen it before? I have not. Okay. So 16 years ago, I do have a cocktail, Karen. (laughs) Excellent. (laughs) That's going to be helpful for this one. What do you got? Well, we'll see. (laughs) It's called the Satanic Panic. (laughs) Well, that's going to get a lot of hits on YouTube. I know, right? What do I need for that? You're going to need lime, juice, dark rum, grenadine, and ginger syrup. Hmm. Going to have to make some more ginger syrup. I know. I went to the store today, get all the stuff for today's drink, and forgot to get ginger. <sighs> so I got to go back and get ginger now. The satanic panic. How do you make it? Oh, we need mint, too. Really? Yeah, mint. I found this on Reddit. I'll read you the instructions verbatim. Are you ready? Sure. Combine lime, ginger syrup, two ounces of rum, and grenadine. Add broken mint leaf with ice in a tumbler and shake the holy fuck out of it. 
Awesome. Strain over ice in a highball glass with one ounce of rum at the bottom. So it takes three ounces of dark rum. That's a lot. Yeah. So apparently put one ounce in the bottom and then you pour this on top of it. Optionally, you can top off with a splash of seltzer water. So how much grenadine and how much? Two spoonfuls of grenadine. And what's the other thing at the top? Lime, one ounce of lime juice, Okay. two ounces of ginger syrup. Okay. He calls it like a one, two, three recipe. So it's one ounce of lime, two ounces of ginger syrup, three ounces of rum. Wow. Okay. He says it seems to really work well for this. So we'll see. Lots of heat up front from the ginger and the spices, but after the ice melts a bit, it really smooths out towards the end. And by then I'm ready for a refill. Mm. <laughs> Sounds like it'll get you there. The satanic panic. Anyone you need to thank this week, Karen? Well, I'd like to thank our listener. There's a lot of podcasts out there. Thanks for spending time with us. What about you, Greg? Yeah, I want to thank our listener too, especially everyone who listened to the Wicked Ramblings episode, which aired like last week now, all about mixology, right? Yes, it's a fun one. I also need to thank the band Verse 13 Karen for providing all of the music on the Scary Spirits podcast. The music does make the podcast better. Anything else, Karen? Anyone who has a minute and wants to help us out so we can be even better than we already are, Greg, if that's possible, can fill out our survey. Yes. Lots of good feedback on our survey. We are actually trying to implement some of the things people have said they would like. We're working on it. Trying. Again, Better every week, Greg. Better every week. Yeah. So please fill out our survey. It's in the show notes and there's a link there in the show notes and you can go to the website and there's a link there too in the show notes. <laughs> Anywhere there's show notes, there's a link to the survey, Karen. And if you can't get enough of us, we also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to on the website, scaryspirits.com. Monthly, monthly newsletter. Yes. We're not going to spam your inbox every week or twice a week or Four times a week with Camp Lejeune <laughs> shit. Yes. <laughs> That's true. Once a month, people. Once a month. Yes. And it has lots Sometime of... during the first week, you will get a three-page newsletter from us. And that is it. We will not bother you the next 28 days. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All right. Anything else, Karen? Please drink responsibly. Yes. Hey, it's Karen, and I'm here to talk to you about getting social with us. Did you know you can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at Scary Spirits Podcast? Or check out our website, scaryspirits.com. If you have something to say, email us at info at scaryspirits.com. And as always, thanks so much for listening. Please drink responsibly. <laughs>